Another area of our kind of communications campaign activities is, is a campaign that, we, that we're still running called Brothers for Life. And this targets older men and it uses media and Satish talked about the importance of media. And it's a national media campaign which looks at HIV risk factors. So in particular it's looking at the links between HIV, gender-based violence, alcohol, multiple, multiple concurrent partnerships. And you may know some, you may, I don't know if you can see it, but you may have heard of some of these people like Thierry Henry, uh, Ryan Giggs. Um, I did ask if I could have a photograph of myself, but they, unfortunately they didn't, they weren't happy with that idea. But um, apparently these people are a lot more famous. Um, but, uh, but we have these national billboards um, which go across the country, which try to um, have the faces of famous sports people, politicians, people who young men and older men look up to, to say, you know, be a man who takes no chances and always uses a, a condom, or be a man who chooses to be responsible with sex whenever he drinks. So it's about using the idea of positive masculinities, but men that um, other men will identify with to encourage them to, um, to be more responsible where necessary with their behavior. We also, if I had time, would show you a digital stories that we have of, of different people who describe their own experiences of growing up, often in violent and challenging contexts, um, and about the struggle that they have gone through um, in, in terms of their own understanding of, of, of gender equality. Secondly, um, a large piece of our work is on policy advocacy and research. And for us, going back to that challenge around how do we move from the individual to the to the, to the scaled-up approach which affects a broader society, we feel it's really essential that we work with, with policymakers. And we, in South Africa, play a dual role. One is around challenging government to properly implement legislation that's already in place, but another is around helping government to build its own capacity. Um, we also feel that it's important to hold men in positions of authority to account. And we took somebody called Julius Malema to the Equality Court in South Africa because he made a comment about a woman who was raped to say that she must have enjoyed it. Um, and we took him to the Equality Court and we won the case. And it was really around saying, you know, as organizations working in this field, we have a responsibility to hold men in positions of authority to account for the things that they say. These are just some examples of our uh, policy work, some of our policy reports, um, scans and guidelines that we do. We do some work within the UN system in terms of providing shadow reports for the Commission on the Status of Women, um, UN agencies that have particular focuses. We work with them to develop guidelines around the, the policy development as with the World Health Organization. But really we're about trying to say what are the entry points at a policy level where we can um, increase and upscale the work um, with men to address their own needs and, and to look at the ways in which they can be more supportive of, the, of their families and, and their communities. So moving on then to policy, the last area of my presentation. Um, those of us who have been involved in Men Engage um, have helped to develop something called the International Men um, and Gender Equality Survey, images. Um, we have a colleague here from Mexico, Jan Figueroa, uh, who was involved in the Mexico work. And Images is a household survey which um, looks, works with men on their attitudes and their practices related to a, very, a variety of issues, health, violence, gender equality. And it's, it's been used to try and understand what are the factors that influence um, men's attitudes and men's, men's behaviours. So some of the questions that we asked... And there's a lot more data. I also, we have a, a limited number of copies of the images report that we just launched, Satish and, and others uh, launched um, in Washington, D.C. Um, recently. Um, so I'm only going to touch just very briefly on some of the, um, some of the outcomes. Uh, but the, the, the key questions that we wanted to ask is, are men on board with the gender equality agenda? How much are men participating in the care of children and other domestic activities? How common is men's use of violence against intimate partners? What factors are associated with this violence? What do men think about laws and policies related to gender equality? And I think, importantly for us, 
Are men evolving to be more supportive of, of gender equality? Can we look across these countries at any changes um, in relation to this? One of the key findings, and this uh, I think also mirrors what I've heard at this conference from, from other presenters, um, is around work stress. And across all of the countries, particularly, say, Mexico, where we had 88% of men who were describing work-related stress and depression as a common experience. And that connection between no work and, and no manhood, and thinking about my own context in South Africa, where we have a really high level of unemployment, that challenge around men not being in employment and what's the connection then to violence and to other potential connection to violence and to other health challenges. We've developed a, um, a scale, uh, I think it's been mentioned already, called the Gender Equality Men's Scale, which is a scale um, that's been used in a number of countries to try and look at men's, um, men respond to a, a list of um, questions and it tries to measure um, against these questions whether the the responses are of low equity, medium equity, or high equity. And it's really used as a tool to try and measure if there's been changes over time with uh, men's equitable attitudes and self-reported behaviors. So if we do an intervention, we can use that tool at the start and at the end to see if there's been any change. And I think one of the interesting things that we find from doing that survey is that men are a lot more equitable than we give them credit for, and that men are a lot more supportive than we may otherwise understand. And across the countries where... Um, we were looking at, yes, there are challenges, but there are also many men who show very equitable attitudes. Um, interestingly, unmarried men had the least equitable attitudes, but younger men and men um, of higher educational attainment um, were, were, most, were more equitable. Um, on men's violence, uh, we can see that there's a strong connection between gender norms, childhood experiences, and work stress factors in relation to men's violence. And then lastly, on the policy level, we asked men, um, you know, do you support women's rights? And then we gave them some specific examples. So the blue bar was, do you support women's rights? And then the other colors were things like quotas for university, quotas for government, etc. And the interesting thing is that in principle, they all say, let's take Croatia as an example, 90%, yes, I support women's rights. But when we ask them on a more practical level about quotas, often that percentage drops. And that's, I think, something that we should be aware of. So, in conclusion, what are some of the emerging headlines from the images survey? I think, firstly, we know that policy is making a difference. Um, paternity leave um, is increasing, particularly the support within government and, and companies um, for paternity leave is increasing men's uptake of that. Um, we have a huge increase in men in Chile now presenting at, at childbirth because of policies. So policy change is important and, and is making a difference. Um, as I said, men are supportive of equality often in the abstract, but resistant in practice. An interesting finding, and I think this mirrors um, a previous speaker, was around the link between if men participate more in domestic work, that leads to, to increased sexual satisfaction for them and their partners. And I think, you know, Saying, you know, be an equitable man because it, you have good sex could be a way of, of trying to, uh, to sell this, perhaps. I'll leave it to the people who are better at these things than I am. Uh, the lines, that I mean. Um, younger educated men are more equitable. And I think the question for us is how do we speed up that change amongst younger, more equitable men? How do we work with younger men to help them to, um, to continue to advance, to support that um, desire for, for more equity? Um, and lastly, something that I've heard in a number of speakers on this conference is that with women rightly de de demanding that men change and are, and are more caring, more collaborative, we have this um, confused identity sometimes in men of being the provider but also being the carer and, and, um, and the, the kind of collaborative partner and what are the challenges within that. So in closing, what are the policies that we would like to see um, based on the images study. And I, and I think really it's around um, policies being more nuanced in the way that they um, address the needs of, of, of men and, and, and talk about issues of masculinity. Um, so, for example, you know, prevention of, of, of violence obviously should have the more punitive measures, but also needs to 
speak to and understand men and boys' own childhood experiences of violence and of gender norms. Um, an interesting entry point for us is around family policies. We found that men are very interested and, and more willing to, to look at um, becoming more equitable in their behaviour um, when it's connected to family and wanting to be a good father and wanting to be a good partner. So policies that we can develop around paternity leave, daycare, maternity leave, income support that recognise both men and women's income security would go a long way to supporting this work. And lastly, um, the need for comprehensive gender equality and social welfare policies that find men's self-interest and change while also end impunity in relation to interpersonal violence. So a way to recognize and empower men and celebrate them for who they are and celebrate the positive elements of masculinity, but at the same time recognize some of the great public health challenges that we have that brings us together at this conference and finding a way of, of, doing, of doing both. Merci beaucoup.